Hello and welcome to another Edexcel IGCSE Paper 1 video. This time looking at the specimen paper. This is the fifth video that I've done on the specimen paper. Others are in the playlist. This is the last one, the last question. And we've got question 5 here to look at. So question 5, an athletics organisation stores data about athletes. For four marks, describe how two features of hosted applications could benefit the athletes athletics organization. Well, hosted means cloud-based, and cloud-based means someone else's server. So all you got to, all you need to, to access any of these features and this, these applications is an internet connection. You don't need a particular device or operating system. So you can access it anywhere at any time you want on on any device even even on your smartphone you can watch these videos on your smartphone and you can access the files that i link on your smartphone if you want to so that's that's a benefit and that is two marks but i need another response for four marks and my second response for my four marks is that employees can collaborate on documents with other athletes or people or organization you can work together on documents for example you can share powerpoints with each other at school and work on them together or google docs for example question b which one of these is a type of storage device well there's two potentially you could have a could you have it could be hard disk blu-ray drive solid state memory or c dvd rom storage device is you could either have hard disk or you could have blu-ray drive either of those there so i've gone for the obvious one a type of storage device is a hard disk question c explain why there are legal requirements for organizations that store data about individuals well particularly in the uk the fines can be unlimited thanks to new regulations GDPR regulations that if organizations store data about someone, it could be any organization, company or NHS, whoever, if that data gets leaked out, if it gets into the wrong hands, then the fines can be unlimited. So why are there legal requirements? Well, data is very, very personal. You're talking financial, medical, data about yourself your date of birth things like that so it's very very personal in the wrong hands that can cause a huge amount of trouble uh, i've written there data is very personal and private some people might want to use this data for criminal activity that criminal activity could be exploitation it could be blackmail anything like that organizations have a legal and moral requirement to hold this data safely and securely Governments have a legal responsibility over their citizens to impose laws on these organisations to hold the data securely so that if it is held securely so that cannot be leaked, cannot get into the wrong hands. This is quite a nice question. D. The athletics organisation uses networks. Complete this table. Three marks. Personal area network. An example of a personal area network. Bluetooth connection. Best example there is a Bluetooth connection. So you the headset to smartphone, for example. Headphones to smartphones or a speaker. So Bluetooth, the best example of a personal area network, and it's it's the only one you should be using in your exam when you're asked to give an example. The internet network type wide area network one the internet is an example of a wide area network and local area network could be an office or school network so a network that you use at school or in an office for example right number two is three benefits to the athletics organization of using a client server network rather than a peer-to-peer -peer network now Client server network is where you have a client and a server and the server provides a response to the client's request. So for example, maybe that you're sharing files or the request might be to print a document or to access network. 
in a peer-to-peer -peer network, it's slightly different. You literally link two or more devices together. You create a link and there's no server. No one's in charge of the network. Just literally, usually connecting, um, usually using it to connect someone else, give someone else your internet connection. So for example, you're creating a hotspot. That's an example of a peer-to-peer -peer network. So there's no security and no one's in charge basically. So the opposite of that is, so we can control user access rights. We can tr control who can and cannot access the network and who can and cannot access different parts of the network. If they've got administrator rights, if they just got basic network rights, is it read only or have they got read write access? For example, we can also centralize backup. So we can back data up and we can do that centrally. So we save everyone's work, create a backup of it. So if there's a problem with the server. We've got the work saved somewhere else. And we can do that centrally. We can do that with a client server network. We cannot do that with a peer to peer network. And another advantage of a peer to peer network is we can share peripherals, for example, printing and other, other devices, plotters, 3D printers, whatever that is, we can share them on our client server network. Question E, an eight marker this one. The athletics organization asks athletes to provide a detailed personal profile with this statement. Having more data about our members helps us to help you. Justify the organization's decision to gather this personal information from athletes. So as I said, this, this question is eight marks and it's eight marks because you need to write quite a bit for this. You need to provide benefits. So you're not looking at the drawbacks of, of which there are some, the drawbacks of, of holding data from athletes. So you need to make a P, point, evidence, explain. You need to make your point, you need to provide some evidence and you need to provide an explanation. So my point is that information can be analyzed to find trends that can lead to better decision making. So I can take that information that I've, I've collected and I can analyze it and I can think about how I can use that in the future. Now I need to think about how uh, I need to explain that. I need my evidence. I need to explain that. So for example, I can analyze data to help prove, improve performance in sport. So looking at the data that I've got can help me make decisions is particular running conditions, particular conditions. Do they improve performance? Certain conditions detract from the performance of the athletes. So analysis of that data can help apply for funding from the government, government bodies. So it might help me look at the data, look at particular demographics of people. Um, does that help me get specific funding? Because I've got a certain demographic in my group. Does that help me get more funding, for example? I've written my second point here. Analysis of data can help personalized experience. For example, looking at the performance of an individual will help create their training program. So looking at how, how they're running, for example, uh, do they need to do a certain type of running? Do they need to do more sprinting? That can help me create their, their individual training program. So I've also got analysis of data can help organization provide activities of interest to the members locations that are the most convenient. So for example, if rowing was, was the most popular in one location, but not in another, then I could provide more rowing in, in the first location and take it out from the other because it wasn't particularly popular, for example. So that analysis of data can be used to, to target marketing, reaching the people who are most likely to respond to the advertising. So I can reach people who are likely to want to do a certain thing rather than just spamming everyone with an advert that they're never likely to be interested in. This is like using cookies, for example. Cookies aren't always a bad thing. They can be used to provide you with adverts that you're more likely to be interested in. They're not always used to provide annoying adverts. You're gonna get those anyway. With cookies, you're recording the data, you're more likely to get something that you're interested in. And so, it's a similar thing. So using that data can help me target, help the organization target marketing. So 
something that you provide a conclusion there. So in conclusion, I might just say that the analysis of data can provide a more personalized experience for the athletes and it's likely to provide them with activities and advertising that they're more likely to respond to and will more likely meet their needs than if not. So we noticed that in that question for eight marks, I haven't gone over any of the drawbacks. It's all the benefits. So any drawbacks, you can get any marks for that. Okay, so for six to eight marks, point evidence explained, well argued, clearly explained. So you're not asked to write loads there, but you need to write it clearly. And a conclusion, which I've just gone through, just to sum up your main points. Don't spend too long on that. Okay. Well, I hope that's helped you today and thank you for watching. And that will be the last sample paper one question I do until the new paper comes out in May, depending on when you're watching this. After May, the 2020 paper will come out and I, of course, will go through the whole of that paper in more of these videos. Thanks for watching and if you're taking your exam this year, good luck.